Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 29 of the Spring Boot Security course. Today we are going to implement the GVT authentication filter. So it's the first step that we need in order to configure Spring Security to work with GVT. Now before we get started and write some code, I'd like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. That being said, let's get started. The first thing that we'll do is we'll create some class to hold a couple of GVT properties or constants that we are going to use for this implementation. So I'm going to call it GVT properties and basically it will just be a container for some constants. Now, okay, uh, one constant that we'll need is the actual, you know, uh, secret you know by which the token gets you know hashed okay so I don't know I can say something like uh, Romanian coder one to three doesn't really matter another one is the expiration time so public static final string okay so it's expiration time okay so 864 you know zero, 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 zero. this is the equivalent of roughly 10 days okay and of course it's not a string it's an integer uh, another thing that we'll need is the token prefix you remember that after we retrieve the token we actually need to send it back in the authorization header and we have to prefix it with the word bearer so it's going to be bearer space authentication token that's how we send uh, requests after we successfully authenticate and this one of course is a string I'm going to call it you know token prefix and this is going to be bearer and then last but not least we have another string uh, I'll call it you know the header in which we'll send the bearer token and the header is authorization Cool. So, these are properties that we'll use to implement both uh, authentication and authorization in GVT. It's a good practice to keep them, you know, in a single class. Now we'll create a new class that will store the user model. So, we'll go in here and we'll create a new class called login view model. Now remember, when we are using GVT, the first thing that we need to do is we need to send a request to authenticate. And that request will contain the username and password, will perform authentication against our database, and if the authentication succeeded, then we'll build the JVT token. So we still need to send a request, an HTTP request, uh, with the username and password in order to successfully authenticate. And that's why we need this login model, because we are, we are going to, uh, in the first request, we are going to send this model in um, uh, in the post method as JSON body. So uh, we just have two string, uh, two string properties. So the first one is username. You have to pay attention to the name. It needs to be exactly username and password. And of course, you need to implement uh, getters and setters basically. And we also need to implement, you know, a setter for username and get username get password um, get password get username and also set username okay now that we have the login view model we actually need to go ahead and create the, the filter so we'll call it jvt authentication filter hope i spelled it correctly and this class just extends the username password authentication filter Okay, so we extend a class that already exists in Spring Security. That's why I keep repeating that, you know, learning Spring Security is about learning its API and then knowing, you know, when to override some behavior to make your application work in the way that you desire. And GVT is exactly the same. Okay, now we are going to need an authentication manager. Okay, and we are going to, sorry. We are going to add this here 
And now we have to override a couple of methods, two to be more precise. The first one is attempt authentication. The second one is successful authentication. Okay, so we want to modify the behavior when we receive the login request and we want to, you know, uh, attempt the authentication and grab the data from, you know, our own type of request. And then if the authentication is successful, we want to build the JVT token, okay? And the rest will be handled by uh, Spring Security. Cool. Now, before we implement these methods, I would like to remind you that, you know, this class is not auto-wired, so we do not add any annotation here. We are going to instantiate it when we register it in Spring Security later on. So, very important, don't do that in here for now. Okay, and now just to speed things up a little bit, I'm going to copy uh, the implementation for this one, and we are going to go through it, okay? So we have a uh, login view model, object mapper, okay, cool. And we have, okay, we have array list. And I think this is something extra here. Oh, login view model. Oh, okay, we, we, we just forgot to, oh, actually, I, I think I'll get rid of this catch because you don't need it. Okay, cool. So, request get info string, we're going to surround this with try catch. Cool. So, um, this method is going to get trigger when we issue a request to login. When we issue post request to dash login, okay? And we need to pass the username and password um, in the body of the request. Now, what's going to happen is that we will try to read the credentials, which basically is a user which is a login view model, so just have username and password. We are going to try to convert uh, the credentials from the HTTP request to a class of this type. And if we have the credentials, then we are going to build an authentication token. Now, this token is not the token that we are going to return to the user. It's a token that Spring Security will use internally to try and authenticate us by the credentials that we provide, okay? So, we are building this token. Notice that we're just adding the username and password in here. This is the only information that we need. And then, based on the authentication manager, we'll try to execute the authenticate method with this token, okay? And we are going to return the authentication uh, class. So, this is everything that we need to do to override how the authentication works. And I'll try to be more specific here, maybe add a couple of more comments, okay? So, we are going to perform a post. Uh, we also need to pass in, you know, something like this, okay? So, username, let's say Dan. password no it's then one to three I think in here you know in the request body okay just to make things a little more explicit okay so we're going to, to issue a post request we're going to uh, post this data and then we'll try to decode this data here and map it to the login view model class which has the exact same properties username and password then we, we build um, a Spring authentication token and we try to authenticate ourselves using the provided credentials, okay? So that's how we can override attempt authentication to work in our case. Now, we also need to do decide what to do when we have been successfully authenticated. Again, I'm going to copy this from here and we are going to explain it. Uh, okay, so I think it's just user user principal. Okay, just going to import these classes that are missing here. Okay, new date, new date, import class. 
okay and of course this is going to be um, jvt properties dot secret okay so if this part here was successful so if we manage to authenticate successfully then we'll hit this method and here what we're trying to do is we are trying to get a user principal instance uh, from the authentication result so basically we are going to the database and we are fetching an instance of this class user principal now of course you, you remember it because it's the class that we use to represent you know our users It's the class that maps with user details and it's our man in the middle between spring security and our application okay uh, back to our filter so if the authentication was successful we are grabbing an instance of this user principal and that's done via the database and now we because we have an instance of the principal we are creating uh, a jvt token okay and this token has a subject and we pass in the username this token is to have an expiration date and we are using you know um, the property that we created earlier so it's going to be 10 days from now and of course we are going to sign this token using this algorithm and we are going to use the secret that is also stored in jvt properties okay so that's how we build the token we need the username we need to set expiration date and we need to sign it you know uh, if you don't remember these steps you can check back episode 6 we will discuss some uh, theoretical aspects of jvt authentication and now in the response header we add the authorization header which is this one the header string authorization and then we add bearer and then we actually add the token okay and we send this response back to our user and then our client application can use the token that we add in the response header and he can use that token to demonstrate in subsequent requests that he is authenticated okay and when the token expires this process happens again and again and again okay so that's it for the authentication filter like i said um, it might be strange at first but it's really not that complicated we receive username and password from http we try to perform authentication using our existing mechanisms which are defined in, in uh, the security configuration so we still go to the database we still try to grab the user by the username and to see if uh, he's there okay and if that's successful then we create the gvt token and then we send it back in the response by using the authorization header okay so that's it for the authentication token and in the next episode we'll see how we can implement authorization before we close i would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at Romanian Coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.